everybody, I wanted to show you this uh, new jog shuttle. Uh, it's a Shuttle Express contour device that one of the Chili Pepper users, Frank Graffanino, hope I'm saying your last name correct there, Frank, uh, he sent me one of these, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago because he was really interested in getting it working. We've seen this working on the Tormac CNC machines, which are pretty expensive devices, but we figured why not get it working on Chili Pepper, or at least Frank figured that. Uh, I believe this is around $60 on Amazon, maybe cheaper other places, um, but it's got a really nice little um, jog feature there uh, where you can kind of advance this direction and go the other. You can hear the machine running in the background. This switches to X, Y, Z, A, and then this toggles between um, the uh, like 1 millimeter or 0.1 millimeter or 0.01. Um, so I'm going to show you how I got this running uh, and sort of show you some video of it jogging. Uh, but yeah, this is the uh, this is the device, Contour Shuttle Express. Um, there was another recent video by Riley Porter with an even cooler pendant. And yes, I think it's fair to call this a pendant, not necessarily a jog shuttle. Although, who knows what the definition is. It would, it would seem to me that maybe a pendant means it's got a digital readout on it as well. Um, and some other fancy things. But... Um, this is a cheaper option for those of you that want to uh, have a, a hardware pendant or, or jog shuttle. Frankly, I feel like using the keyboard is actually pretty workable uh, in Chili Pepper, so you don't necessarily need to go with these, but they're pretty fun. So I'll show you uh, some more video of it working. Okay, so let's have some fun with this uh, new controller from, uh, from our friend Frank, uh, who uh, wrote this server. Um, and the server talks direct to the serial port JSON server. So I'm going to try and get the tip of this, uh, the end mill, to this corner because I need to do some milling on this piece of aluminum, and I'm going to start with this lower left corner. So pretty sensitive operation here, but pretty normal, normal sequence. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to X, and I'm going to get this close. Now notice if I just do one notch you know, I get pretty predictable movement. But I can also use the uh, the outer wheel. Okay, so I'm sort of doing the slow version and I'll, I'll show you the increments that Frank uh, programmed for us. Okay, so you got a pretty good idea. I got pretty close, but I'll jog back a little. And then I'm going to go into the, um, the y-axis there and come forward. So I'll use the outer wheel. Lit up on that. I think I'm getting close enough that... Okay. Now, I'm realizing that I'm going to have uh, my machine run into this, so this is probably not the best setup. I actually may have to rotate it. Um, well, let's see how close we can get. You know what I probably would do is I would just change the start position there if I just need a hole there. So I'll get it back to that corner. Okay, I'm going to go down on the Z a little. So that's the third button. Uh, and then technically, you know, I should probably just use my my zero out on this, um, which could be a, an intriguing way to go, but uh, I don't really have my Z clearance set up for this. So I'll just, I'll, I'll go down a little bit more. And then that's about it. I'll go back to Y. Sorry. Um, yeah. And then I'll go to X. Now, I might need some finer grain positioning, and really, Frank did let this button over here toggle, but I think you get the idea for now. It, it, it's really quite workable. Okay, so the, there's a new button now inside Chili Pepper called Shuttle Express, and uh, it's really just, um, it's a little bit more of like an informational widget uh, than it is something super functional, although the the axis and the move by units are up here. Um, but I tossed this together 
on behalf of uh, Frank's awesome work on this project, and there's some links to purchase it. But I'm going to go through the build instructions um, so that you can kind of follow along how I built it. Now, I am running um, my uh, serial port JSON server on a Raspberry Pi 2. And I'm just going to log in here. And I'm going to follow this process. Now, I have not installed it on this uh, particular Raspberry Pi, so I truly am starting from scratch. So I'm going to do this first step, which is to ensure that the OpenSSL dev libraries are installed. And uh, we'll go ahead and let that run. Um, it looks like I'm okay on that. So I'm not sure why I have live SSL dev, but that's good. I mean, I have other stuff on this. Um, great, so we're done on that. Now let's download the no pull library from here. Uh, according to what Frank is telling us. So I'm going to right click, open a new tab. And okay. So I'm going to just take the most recent, which looks like this. So I'll copy that address. He's saying something about what version, but let's just try the latest. So we'll go back here and we'll say wget that and let's see then he's saying extract configure make okay so we will tar dash x zvf the um, no pull library we'll change into that directory and he's saying do a dot configure okay and then he wants us to do a make and then a make install um, so we'll probably, this may run quick from what I remember. Um, just for those of you who um, haven't tried the new Raspberry Pi 2, it really is significantly faster. Uh, it, it makes going back to the original Raspberry Pi actually be kind of painful. Um, so for what it's worth, I am really happy with it. All right, well, that's running. Let's in another win. Oh, it's done already. So let's say make. Right, because that was the configure that I did. And while that's running, I'm going to duplicate this session just for the sake of time. And I'm going to also do this next step. Take a git clone of the wiring pi utility. Instructions are here. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And I think I already have git. Yeah, so I don't need that. And I don't need the update or upgrade. I already... I'm upgraded. Okay, so let's do this. So we'll git clone that wiring pi. Let's see how our other guy's doing. We'll kind of watch both of these. Oh, this one's already done. And then change directory wiring pi according to what's over here. And then git pull origin. I'm not sure I really need that. Yeah, look, I didn't need that. Okay, and then dot slash build. So that's building. And then what else is the next? Yeah, so that the new build script will compile and install it all for you. It does use the sudo command. Okay, so that's fine. We'll just let that thing run. Okay, this one's done. So that was the no poll. And on the no poll, he wanted a configure and a make. Let's just make sure, yeah. And then I got to do a sudo make install. So that's throwing my libs into, you know, into some live directors. Okay, cool. And then that looks like that's done. Note to compile program of primary wiring pi. Cool. Okay, then step four, download shuttle CP from GitHub. Okay, so let's do this. I'll do it in this window. We'll change directory back to our home. We will git clone. So that shouldn't take too long. And then we'll change directory into shuttle CP. And then what's Frank telling us? He's saying edit shuttle CP. I don't think I'm going to have to. We'll use VI. Shuttle CP.C. Um, I'm on localhost. I'm on port 8989. I'm fine with his microseconds. So let's just go with that. 
And what's his next step? Build the shuttle CP binary by running make. Fine. Let's run make. And then he's saying, first, make sure SPJS is already running, which it is. Obviously, you can see here it's running. Um, and Chili Pepper has already opened a connection to your machine. I run SPJS on the same Raspberry Pi. Fine. Start up shuttle CP with an argument. That is the device mine is. But he also, or you can use dot, the dot shuttle script, which I'm going to use. So we'll just do the dot shuttle script. Connected. Oh, yeah. It's already working. So I'm... I'm moving um, the jog the jog item. Cool, it's already working. You can see the commands, uh, you know, coming in here. Um, okay, now here's the special last part. Is uh, I'm gonna cancel this and I'm going to uh, we'll make this bigger. But I did some special techniques um, in this widget for Frank, which I'll I'll show you really quick. So there's this new um, broadcast command that is available that uh, I have a sort of a sample. All you do is you send the word broadcast, and then whatever's after it, it'll regurgitate it to all end clients. So yes. there's a, a little special set of commands Why? where this, this widget will look for those broadcast messages and play an audio um, clip based on Z. just stupid stuff like that. Again, this broadcast can be anything, right? You can just say the word blah, and it'll rebroadcast the word blah, or you can make it be something fancy like JSON. Totally up to you. It doesn't matter. Serial JSON server is just agnostic. Whatever's after the broadcast is what it'll regurgitate. So if we make this code, sorry, if we make this code regurgitate that, I'll just use nano. Uh, then we should be able to get it to say stuff. So we'll go in here, and I'm pretty sure, you know, when when a movement happens, like X, Y, or Z, like when the button's pressed, um, that um, that we could broadcast this this information. So I have not actually done this yet. But it sure seems workable. Um, so he's got handle event. There's a key. There's a jog shuttle. You know, so it's probably the key that we want because he's got an EV code and an EV value. Um, so let's see. That's jog. This method is shuttle. This method is key. And then he's got X, Y, Z, A. So I would want to do it there. And then he's got this increment button. The kicker is I want to make sure that um, whatever he's using to send up to the serial port JSON server makes sense. And it, it looks to me, let's see what he's got, right? He's sending get access and speed. Then he's doing key. Then he's doing shuttle. Um, I'm trying to see where he actually sends. Yeah, right here. So this seems to be what we would need to do because he is sending to, this goes to serial ports JSON server. So, right, he does it a command and then he does a command Q. So I'm, I imagine this is what we want. Okay, so let's... Just go into the key. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this. Okay, so I went I went ahead and added uh, this little broadcast command right here uh, when the X buttons hit, and I'm gonna go ahead and now recompile it by saying make. Uh, nothing to be done for all. Oh, sorry. Let's just kind of. Maybe do this. We'll rewrite it out. We'll say make. And we'll rerun it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and X. I hit the X. Notice I'm getting this extra little broadcast command sent. And uh, back in here, X. you'll see the little audio and that it's saying X. 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 
that's, that's, it's kind of fun. Um, what you'll see, you won't really see it coming in here, but if you turn on this console, which a lot of people don't know about, you're going to see the low level commands that's coming into um, the serial port JSON server. Now, it looks like Frank is sending, you know, this, uh, which actually wouldn't have been too bad. He probably should just send that into broadcast because then you keep getting that error back. Um, but watch, I'll hit it again. Now we need to make sure that Y and Z and A also get commands. So let's go back. And um, what we'll do is I'm going to copy these. So I'm going to control K both of them and then control U. And then I should be able to control U, control U and control U. But the difference is, uh, of course, that I want Y, Z, A. And I think that should do it. I'll write it out. I'll go back to this side. I'll remake it. Uh, I will rerun it. And Y, Z, A. Boom. X, Y, Z. And notice that the little uh, indicator up here is changing. X, Y, Z, Z, A, Z, 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 A, Y. Pretty fun. Okay, now I also took the liberty of the increment button. I already put the data in here, but it spits out um, a 1 or a 0, 1. So let's go ahead and watch that. 0, 0, 1. So notice you get this incrementing. 0, 1. 0, 1. 1. Okay. 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And you get some audible feedback um, as you toggle those. So I'm now, you know, jogging. I'll move. 0, 0, 1. And then, you know, that's way too slow anyway. I think that should, we should just drop that one. But that's up to Frank. Uh, I'm in the Y, y. right? And I'm going to. 0, 1, 0, 1. You know, I'm getting some nice clean jogging. And then just, just one last thing. Uh, what I'm noticing, you guys, is that um, when I run um, Frank's uh, stuff, he um, he has a Gerbil device, and, and Gerbil's great, and the, the price point's great, but there's a problem, which is that Gerbil doesn't support feed hold, and feed hold is a really big deal. Um, and, you know, my, my take on why it doesn't support feed hold is that there's just too much code trying to get squeezed into that little 328p chip. Um, but on the tiny G, there's, you know, it's an advanced chip. So, of course, it's got all of the, the stuff that I think is actually pretty darn important for, for workable CNC machining. But I need to make sure that when – I'll give an example. When I am jogging – I, I get kind of a mushy stop, and you can see that just a percent's being sent at the end, and that's that's not bad because that wipes the buffer. In fact, let's watch what that does. So notice we're at like 18, 17, and then a percent is sent, which wipes the buffer here, um, which helps. But you should really do a feed hold and then a buffer wipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go now. If you're on Gerbil, you can't do this, but on Tiny G, you surely can. So right where he sends the percent, I'm going to also send a feed hold. Let me write that out, recompile, and rerun. Now when I move, I get much quicker stop. In fact, yeah, it's really quick. Now I get a clean deceleration, which I want. I don't want it to be too jerky. But I get a really fast, clean stop, and you're noticing that I'm getting the, the exclamation, the percent. So that was the final little piece. Uh, I'm really happy with it, and I hope you guys uh, will enjoy using the Shuttle Express as well. And thank you again, Frank, for all of the beautiful work on that.